this drive. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, CFL content for the fans, by the fans, and we got our week 18 review here with an interesting week of football, some pretty close games, some very important games. Uh, but yeah, let's waste no time and get right. But first, before we get into that, we got to talk about today's sponsor, which is BetStamp. Now, BetStamp is not a traditional uh, sports betting website, uh, it does not, as it does not offer you one money line. It will actually offer you many money lines from a variety of sources and other betting websites. So that way, you can make the most for every bet you make. So make sure when you download it from the App Store or if you use the link in the description below to the website, you will use code CFL Central so that way they know that you're coming from us and you're saving money. So that way you can make the most out of your bets and get the biggest possible payout instead of whatever just your app will offer you. So thanks again to BetStamp for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. So yeah, first game of the week was Saskatchewan versus Hamilton. Hamilton wins this game as I predicted, 18 to 14, with a solid performance over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Uh, a little bit of a tough game on the uh, for the running core of um, Saskatchewan here, as they were as Cody Fajardo was their leading rusher. They weren't able to really punch through and get uh, get that running game going as they have been in some of these past weeks. Whereas Hamilton actually quite relied on it, only getting 5.3 on average, but Wes Hills ran for an went ran for 132 yards. They went to him for 25 carries this game. So a lot, a lot, a lot of reliance on the run game. Their leading receiver was Anthony Johnson, who actually played pretty solid, got 91 yards. Only three throws, though, so 30.3 on average per completion, which, fantastic, very, very good, very great there. And uh, Dane Evans would sadly throw no touchdowns but two interceptions, but it was enough of a performance for them to be able to win. Cody Fajardo threw for two touchdowns but also two interceptions, so equals out there. Um, and so this is just kind of more of Saskatchewan's really sinking down. And this was a really key game now because if Hamilton wins, uh, so Hamilton now is one game behind uh, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan now has played um, 16 games and Hamilton's played 15. Saskatchewan with 12 points, Hamilton with 10. Hamilton has one, uh, they got to play one more game to make up their um, amount of games played with Saskatchewan. That will happen this next week. Uh, however, they're now literally just one win, and they're now tied with Saskatchewan. So this is going to be a very, very, very tight race for that third spot in the East, even though Saskatchewan's not in the East. The crossover, as you uh, will remember there for that. So I am really curious to see if Saskatchewan will cross over like I predicted at the start of the year, or if this sinking ship has just sunk a little too much. So uh, speaking of ships... Speaking of ships, let's go on to our next game uh, between the Lions and the Argonauts, where the Argonauts would sail to victory 23 to 20 over the Lions. I did not expect BC to win, uh, to lose this game. I expected them to win this. Um, and I didn't really did not expect McLeod Bethel Thompson to get 352 yards in the night, one touchdown, no interceptions, so solid ratio there. And yeah. This, this was a good game for, for Toronto. This is what they needed to really start having some consistency going into uh, playoffs. They're going to be, um, I'm not sure if it's technically confirmed yet, but they, uh, they're, they're going to have the, the East Finals going to be in Toronto. It will be. Uh, Markeith Ambles would have a solid game on the receiving core of things for the Argonauts with an average of 15.1 uh, per carry, um, per reception, sorry. And a, uh, 121 uh, yards per game, uh, or not per game, um, 121 yards for the night. Having a tough time talking. I'm not exactly sure why. I think it's probably because I had some issues with making this video. Uh, but Toronto was able to put up some consistent points all game, which is really, really key uh, against a team like BC. BC played a solid performance as well. Not really that bad. Uh, but it was just one of those things where they couldn't... Um, there wasn't any of that special sauce for BC. They, di they didn't get, uh, there wasn't anything that really stood out that much. It was just kind of a solid Vernon Adams Jr. BC Lions game. And BC plays best when that offense really gets going or when that defense is absolutely shut down. So with no real standout, standout performances uh, from the Lions, I'm not 
too surprised that uh, they lost this game when thinking about it in that in that context. But that's with hindsight, so it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, so the Argonauts win that game 23-20. to And our next game of the week was the Bombers and the Elks in Winnipeg. 48-11 to victory for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I mean... Pretty much everyone saw this coming that the, the that the bombers were going to win in about by you know thirty seven points. That seems pretty on brand for the direction these teams uh, two teams have been going. Taylor Cornelius plays a solid game. He really does, and Cornelius has has done all right this entire season. He would get one touchdown. However, the interesting thing for the bombers is that all three bombers quarterbacks were involved in at least a touchdown. So Calaris threw for a touchdown. Calaris was then on the field when Prukop. I think ran for a touchdown and then later Drew Brown comes in and Drew Brown throws for a touchdown. That's right. The Drew Brown train. If you, uh, if you guys follow, uh, uh, sir, or subscribe to an all hockey podcast and see, um, my bomber game reactions, make sure you check those out. If you haven't, they are, um, the, there's some of my favorite stuff to do. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, I think, I think I go through the games pretty well. And so, you know, if you're a bomber fan, watch for that. And if you're not a bomber fan, well, watch for when I play your team and, you know, Maybe maybe it'll be sad, or maybe you'll be laughing in my face the entire time. Either way, I'll just appreciate that you tuned in. Uh, but yeah, so this would be a, a, a good game for Zach Caleros, a good game for the, the whole uh, quarterback core for the Bombers, but this would be a standout game for Dalton Schoen. Dalton Schoen comes into the preseason, you know, let's, let's see what this guy, let's see what this guy's all about. Maybe he'll make a roster spot. Plays unbelievable, makes a roster spot. Wow, you know, this is good, you know. Having some young guys come up, you know, give him a few years, and he'll be doing, oh, Oh, I give him five minutes, and then he'll be doing great. Dalton Schoen gets three touchdowns this game. Seven receptions, 23.1 on average, 162 on the night. A very good night for Dalton Schoen. A great, great night because Dalton Schoen's had a lot of good nights. He is, that I think now this is like the eighth straight week at least where he's gotten a touchdown. So impressive, impressive performance by Dalton Schoen. And it's just one of those things what the, that there's not much the Elks could do about this. So, you know, with the Elks, you just kind of have to hope um, that they're able to, moving forward, kind of build those pieces around Taylor Cornelius. So that way, so because Taylor Cornelius, there, there's there's promise in Cornelius. So uh, I hope uh, Elks fans don't get too down for, uh, you know, the future of the Elks, though, because uh, I think it's brighter than some may think. Uh, but then our last game of the week was the Ottawa Red Blacks versus, or last game of the week, yeah, what's the last game of the week? Sorry, I'm thinking it's the first game of next week. That's what it is. Uh, the Ottawa Red Blacks beat the Montreal Alouettes 24-18. to not, uh, not the way I expected it. I expected Montreal to win this game. However, these two will rematch next week. You will see my thoughts on that uh, in uh, the video coming out soon. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be... Uh, this is a game where Montreal was able to... They were so hot cold in this game. You know, got out to... Bit of a cold start, but or, well, I, mean, I shouldn't say cold start, but a lukewarm start over Ottawa. They got a field goal. Ottawa got nothing. So is what it is there. Pretty pretty even second quarter. Bo both teams putting up um, a uh, touchdown, and uh, Alouette's got a little bit more. Uh, so the second half of the game is really when the Red Blacks take control here, and it is what uh, won this game. So Trevor Harris uh, plays a, a good night, uh, 338. Uh, so the offense wasn't really as much of a problem for Montreal, uh, however, uh, at least in the throwing game. But there were two issues here for Montreal. So first off, you got to be you got to be able to shut down that Ottawa Red Blacks offense. That's where the Red Blacks are at their strongest, uh, and they weren't able to do that uh, enough, especially for a whole second half of this game. They were really able. To, they were really struggling with that a bit. And then also the running game here. Ever since Standback went out, it has not been the same. They've had some really good performances. Uh, but uh, this game just wasn't it. Uh, Walter Fletcher leading the uh, leading the team in this game in rushing yards gets 23 yards, 3.3 for seven carries. That's not not a good stat. So uh, hopefully uh, Montreal is able to get that under control uh, come playoffs because that's what they're going to need whether they're playing Hamilton or Saskatchewan. So yeah, so Red Blacks win 24 to 18. And uh, I'm curious to see where this will go with uh, the, their next week's rematch. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I've been stumbling my words the entire way through. I'm not sure what's wrong with me. But make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Make sure you guys use BetStamp. It's great. 
It's great. It's great. It's great. And if you have any questions about it, please uh, message me on my social media. I actually have a really special offer that's going through here. So if you actually want to know more about that, make sure to message me on my social media and I'll hook you guys up with that. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.